In this video I'm going to show you how to use Fog Photoshop Action. So I'm going to use this photo here uh, as an example for a demonstration. And the, this is the effect that they're going to create. Okay. So as you can see the action creates the fog effect and you have the full control where you wish the fog to appear. You also got a light source there, uh, some blur effects and so on. Okay. So I got a few more examples to show you. From this photo I created this effect. And from this what I created this. Okay, so let me just close these windows now. So when you open up your photo, the first thing that you need to check is that your photo is a background layer. Okay, so it should be called a background and have this little lock icon. So if you got anything else, just go to layer, new, and just choose a background from layer. Okay, uh, then uh, just click on this little arrow here and in this drop down menu go to the panel options and just make sure that the add copy to copy layers and groups is checked okay then uh, check the image mode okay uh, the image mode should be uh, rgb color mode 8-bit kernel and you can you should check the image size as well so you should use photos that are at least uh, 1500 uh, wider or high okay a resolution uh, can be between 72 and 300. So just going to click OK. So to load the action, just go to Window, Actions, click on the little arrow here, Load Actions, and just choose the action that can be downloaded. OK. Here it is. The action will appear in your Actions panel. Open up the folder. OK. So uh, now uh, what you have to do is to create a new layer. So just go to Layer new and choose layer and just name it brush okay all letters must be lowercase click ok and just pick a brush tool and I'm gonna use a salt brush and choose any color, color doesn't matter and just brush over your subject just like this you don't have to be precise okay so he already done this before so I'm just gonna open my PSD file here it is Okay, so as I said, you don't have to be precise, uh, as you can see, and uh, after finishing brushing, all you have to do is to play the action. So, uh, I'm going to pause the video here, and I'm going to get back when the action is finished, and I, I'm going to go throughout all the layers to show you how can you uh, customize the effect to get the most out of the effect. Okay, so the action here just stops, so first I will close the actions panel. And when the action is finished, uh, the first thing that you probably want to do is to quickly close down all these folders. And how to quickly do that is to just hold Control uh, and that Alt buttons for PC or Command Option for a Mac. And just while this group is selected, it will be automatically selected by the action. Just click on this little arrow here. Okay, so you will close all the folders. So let's quickly see what we got here. So we got the Add Noise option, Vignette, you got a Photo Tint. Overall contrast, all the vibrance, you got here uh, 10 color options to choose. Okay, and what you got here in the fog folder, uh, you got the lighting. Okay, so you got a light source, and you can change its color, you got the shadow, and here you got a fog, uh, there you can, you got fog and the mist, you can change the fog contrast and density, and you got the sharpening layers, main photo, and blue la blur layers. And how I like to customize this effect is to uh, just open the fog folder and hide uh, some of these layers and uh, and then go uh, I will turn off the adjustments also and then go uh, from the bottom of the layers. Okay, so this is your, just your original background layer. So this is the background blur. Okay, so uh, the area that you have brush will stay in focus and outside area will be blurred as you can see and you can control the blur so you can just click on the word opacity and drag it aside to control the blur amount okay or just click on this little arrow here and move this cursor and if you like to add more blur you can just turn on this layer here okay you can then also change its opacity so you're just gonna use both layers and then I'm gonna lower opacity this one 35 Okay, so this is the main photo, and if I would turn it off, you will see that your photo will, uh, would become blurred. So, 
what you can do is to select this layer mask and just pick a brush tool and set foreground color to black and just brush for uh, some places that you want to be uh, blurred okay just like this okay and you can always just brush with the white into the layer mask and remove the blur okay so uh, what we got here we got a sharpen and contrast okay so this layer will give you a sharpen and a contrast only to your subject okay and you can just change its opacity here okay and you got a fine sharpening okay so this layer uh, will give uh, the sharpening to the fine details okay and you can also change its opacity there okay so uh, now first I'm gonna go inside the lighting folder so just gonna turn on this layer and this is the light source and when you take a move tool you can just click and drag and you can move this light source anywhere you like uh, what you can also do is take uh, the plus tool just go right click print transform and you can then scale this light source okay and I'm going to move it over here just like this and I'm gonna select all and just gonna click over here to center the light source okay and what you get here you get a shadow layer and you'll see that these uh, two layers are linked uh, and also uh, these layers are linked into the fog layer some uh, here okay I'll show you that later and so outside these uh, light source uh, areas um, uh, outside the light source will be uh, darkened okay as you can see so it all depends where you put the light source okay so outside the light source uh, areas will be uh, darkened with this layer here called shadow and you can change its opacity okay I'm just gonna leave it by default and uh, you can also change uh, you can you got the layer mask here okay it's placed it so uh, the layer mask looks so it uh, uh, actually uh, darkens the areas outside the light source but you can of course brush into this mask and change that if you like okay and if you turn on the light source color layer you can just double click over here and here you can change the color of the light source and you can also change the saturation okay and I'm just gonna use the default light there and now I'm gonna open the fog group so just turn it on okay so uh, as I said uh, these two layers you'll see they're linked with the contrast and the fog layer so on the place you get the light the fog will be less visible okay actually there will be no fog on the place where is the light okay as you can see so you can just change its opacity here I'm gonna lower the fog opacity like this and this is the mist and I'm just gonna lower its opacity as well and also you'll see that the mist has a layer mask but the layer mask is the looks uh, it um, this layer <coughs> cannot be uh, uh, trained uh, when you move the light source okay uh, the light source layer is uh, linked with the shadow layer this one and this one here so uh, w but it's not uh, linked with the mist layer okay so uh, the mist layer will uh, st uh, if you move the light source mist layer will still remove the the mist on the places where the light source was at the beginning so what uh, as you'll do is just delete this layer mask okay and then just hold control or, or command for Mac and just click uh, into this layer here to create selection and just set the swatches here and just click here to create the layer mask okay. then select the layer mask and just press uh, go to image ad adjustments and uh, choose invert okay so now the mist is also created as the fog only uh, outside the the light source area okay and you're gonna just use opacity like this maybe a little bit more this okay. okay just a little bit more 
like this. So what we get here is the fog contrast and uh, this layer is linked with uh, others so uh, what it does is uh, lowers the contrast of the details in the fog okay and uh, when you double click over here you see contrast you can change the contrast value okay I usually just leave it like this and you get a fog density here okay so when you double click over here just move this cursor you first increase the uh, fog density there Gonna do something like this and now let's go inside the adjustments group okay just gonna turn on the adjustments and what we got here we got the add noise layer so when you turn it on you see it will add some noise to your photo and you can just lower its opacity if you like okay or uh, increase it here we got the vignette, okay, so we're gonna just increase uh, the opacity and you get a layer mask, so when you go to right click on the layer mask and go to refine mask uh, what you can do here actually is to lower the, to move the shift edge here to change the look of the vignette, okay, you can make this border thicker or thinner if you want to make it thicker then just go shift edge uh, into the right and if you wish to make it thinner then just uh, shift the edge into the left okay uh, so uh, also uh, what I'm going to do is to pick a brush tool and choose a black color here and I'm just gonna brush a vignette here or actually I'm just gonna make the selection of the light source and then just select this layer mask and just uh, fill it with a black color so just go to edit fill foreground color so to remove vignette from the light source Okay, you can see how the layer mask looks now. You can brush a little bit more here, okay. Uh, to see how your uh, layer mask uh, looks like this, uh, you just hold Alt or Option for Mac and just click on the layer mask, okay. So here, this is the photo tint and when you turn it on, okay, it will add some, uh, a nice tint to your photo and you can choose any filter here that you like okay let's choose this one and you can change the density here you can also change the opacity and this is the overall contrast layer okay so how this layer works you just change its opacity so you can just click here and drag it aside okay just like this and here we got the uh, overall vibrance layer so just double click there and if the action will increase these uh, values here so you can just click and drag these cursors to change the vibrance okay you can always uh, click on this uh, uh, little arrow here just uh, once to uh, to set the values uh, uh, as the action uh, sets them okay so just gonna increase this just gonna actually lower it a little bit like this. Okay. Now uh, we're gonna go inside the color options folder, and what you got, uh, you got here the ten color options to choose from, and all you have to do is to just choose the color option. Uh, the color option will be turned on by default. Just choose the color option that you like, turn it on, see how it looks, if it doesn't like it try with another until you find one that goes the best with your photo and some of them, uh, this is the black and white uh, some of them you can, like this one here, you can, uh, you can customize any of them, okay and uh, uh, when you double, uh, double click uh, or here in this little box here and you can just click and drag now, okay, so you can uh, this is a gradient fill, okay, that will add some uh, glow, you can just move it to your glow uh, in the uh, glow layer in the lighting folder, okay, like this, and then just click over here and you can change its color, okay, change the color of the gradient, uh, you can so get some nice color effect, uh, you can also just double click there 
uh, and change the uh, angle here okay so let's choose this one here or let's see what we got more and what I'm going to do actually now I'm going to combine a few of color options so I'm just going to use this one like this lower the opacity and then you're going to choose the first one there just like this okay and what you can do after you finish with customizing is to make a new layer uh, above the old layers and go to image, uh, Apple image, ok, just click ok and then go to filter, render and just choose the lens flare and I'm just gonna place it uh, where my light source is placed like uh, or here and you're gonna choose this one uh, lens type, you can change its brightness here just gonna use default okay okay so you can add some nice uh, color effects like that you can change the color mo uh, the, uh, blending mode to screen then play with the opacity okay just gonna leave it to normal actually and increase this to like this okay you can also use the dodge and burn tools uh, what you can do is to just take a, a dodge tool set this to highlights so it affects the highlights and just gonna choose 5 here and just let me zoom in Bef uh, if you have to go to image I play image ok and now I'm just gonna increase the highlights a little bit like this ok so just click like that and you can also use the uh, a burn tool to darken some areas, like mid tones, okay. Just like that. And I also forgot to tell you so, uh, here in the fog, you, you don't have to use this layer mask of the uh, lighting effect, so you can just delete this layer mask or just fill it with the black and then just brush with the white on the place where you wish the fog to appear okay so uh, just to know that and uh, so I'm pretty much happy with this effect and here we got the brush layer and uh, this layer is here uh, for the case if you wish to play the action again using the little bit uh, different brush area for example if you wish to add some more areas in the focus you can just uh, turn on this layer can brush with the same color, it's not matter. Just brush, uh, oops, sorry, didn't choose the brush tool, and just brush uh, like this, and then just remove all these layers and just play the action again. Okay, so just know that. So let's just quickly see the before and after. So from this, we created this. Okay, so uh, I hope you understood everything, and if you need any help. Uh, feel free to contact me anytime via my Armato profile page and thanks for watching.